What's good football fans back at you once again with another video and today we're gonna do some more film review But I really want to look at a couple players that I haven't had a chance to get an in-depth kind of feel for and that's two young safeties We got in Cameron curl and Jeremy Reeves now curl was a seventh round pick this year And to be completely honest after seeing a lot of his film and looking at him play the first few weeks that he came out on the field I could tell and I've been saying for a little bit now that I felt like this guy was better than a seventh round pick and that you know with the way that the combine this year took place and you know not a whole lot of 100 percent certainties on a lot of players i feel like that made his draft stock slip a lot honestly i'm not certain where he would have gone if not for that but i feel like we got a steal out of this guy and i've actually been saying that for a while now and ever since landon collins went down with injury he's been able to step up and immediately he became the top tackler on the team now, what I'm seeing a lot from him is they're using him a lot in the slot and, you know, obviously putting him up in the box a lot. Reeves, on the other hand, is an undrafted guy who has spent a lot of time on the practice squad. And as fate would have it, the team was actually thinking about signing Eric Reed. And it's actually a good thing for Reeves that they didn't because instead of signing Reed to the practice squad, which is what Ron Rivera wanted to do, they brought Jeremy Reeves up from the practice squad and he knew the system already and that's what Rivera was looking at and why he offered Reed a practice squad spot instead of an actual roster spot not trying to belittle the man he just didn't know the system and with all the injuries and everything Reeves has just been given more playing time I'm really rooting for this kid because I love the story of the undrafted guys and I haven't liked what I saw from Troy Apke on the field as of yet. But there were flashes against the Cowboys where he didn't look that bad. I'm not certain what the future holds for Landon Collins. I know the team has an out in his contract. And, you know, maybe there's some talk in the future about what happens with him. I'm not certain. I'd always thought that he could maybe transition into a really good middle linebacker. I don't know what anybody else might think of that, but... You know, I've always thought that he always played a good hybrid to begin with. At any rate, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Now, before I start, I just want to point out that Curl wears the 31, Reeves wears the 39. You know, I wanted to take a, a quick look at a few things they do, but I really want to see how they do in coverage. And I really want to see how well they do, you know, wrapping up with good tackling. And uh, this play kind of stood out to me at first. Because I was thinking to myself, well, who was who was supposed to be covering the middle of the field there? But then I remember during the game, this was the play where Bostick pulled up. I really think Bostick should have been able to just lay the wood on him right there. But I think that he's also kind of caught up now and not knowing what to do because of that penalty and that fine he got. But if you see, Curl came up and was guarding what Zeke Elliott was going to do in that position right there. And he was kind of shadowing the back out of the backfield, which is exactly what he's supposed to do. He can't do two players, you know, job at the same time. You can see him pointing. And yeah, Bostick should have been covering that position in the field. If you look back in the uh, on the coverage there, Jimmy Moreland was up at the top covering that receiver. Bostick was just in the middle of nowhere. He was in no man's land. One thing I enjoy about this kid is his ability to, be, to read and react to the play and wrap up for the tackle. And he does well on this play right here. One thing I've really been enjoying what they've been doing with Curl is using him a lot, rushing the quarterback, putting pressure on the passer. And that's something that I enjoy seeing coming from the box safety. Now, he doesn't get to Andy Dalton on this play, but he gets enough pressure where he makes Dalton change up what he's thinking about and what he's doing. Now, Zeke stepped up and did his job, but and, and they got the first down there. To those that may have been wondering where was Curl during that Amari Cooper long touchdown pass, here you go. They lined him up to put pressure on the quarterback, and he did his job, which was, you know, put pressure on the QB. And he actually had a line of sight to the quarterback, but Dalton just made that pass. And I'm going to be honest, if you look back at that pass again, it looks like Apke may have been the one who wasn't there for some backside help. And I just don't like that guy, honestly. Uh, maybe it's just... I don't know, maybe it's just bad feelings with the way that the free safety position goes for us or something, but Apke just doesn't do it for me. And as I've said before, I think suspect is being nice to him by you know using that word and trying to describe the way he plays. But on this particular play right here, Ronald Darby was also beaten. 
can't put it all off on Apke, but because because Darby really, you know, he really misplayed that play, and Cooper made him pay for it. But I feel like Apke should have given some help over the top there. Watch it one last time for Miss Angle. Yeah. All right, so here's the first time that Reeves is on the field. Here's a good example of Reeves coming across and making a pretty good tackle. Well, actually, he's part of a gang tackle there, but yes, he comes in and, and, and lays the wood at the end. So I'm not really sure how I should look at this or not, whether or not he's playing too soft of a zone here or if maybe that's what the way the play is designed. But he did make a good tackle once Schultz made the catch. So if you watch it from this angle. You can see he's definitely playing a soft zone, but he makes the play. Good tackling. Now this play right here stuck out for me immediately as soon as I saw it because it, it immediately, when he comes around the turn, it looks like Kendall Fuller has missed the play there and then Cameron Curl steps in and makes the tackle I mean it was perfect teamwork I love the way that that all went down this defense is starting to be a well-oiled machine and Cam Curl is definitely a piece that I like in it that's the play right there I like that so you go back again you see it from this angle and you see what I'm talking about I, I just I love that after spending so much time searching for safeties I really like this curl kit a lot. Now in this particular play right here, offensive holding was called and the play came back, but Cameron Curl, watch him come up and, and make this tackle after it was missed. I mean, Zeke could have taken off a little bit longer. As I said, you know, the play was called back for offensive holding, but it's really nice to see a sure tackle and safety wearing burgundy and gold. Watch it from this angle, you see it again. Zeke makes his cut. The tackles are missed, and boom, Curl makes the play. This play here is much like the last one. Boom, another sure tackle there. I, I, I love seeing a guy come in and make the tackle, and there's no misses, there's no, you know, oh, no, he broke it. No, the play is made, and the play is over. He got his gain, but our guy made the stop. Now, I wanted to make it a point to showcase the next couple of plays right here because this is after that interception where Terry McLaurin came up and made the tackle at the six yard line or the four yard line I should say and in this position right here the two guys that I'm trying to show on this film right here really showed out which is something I love to see if you see Curl he, he sets the edge right here and then makes the tackle or he, he helps make the tackle where Zeke was trying to go out and then you see Holcomb lift him up in the air love to see this development of a player is like the best thing in the world for me to see and and i've told like i said before i think this guy's already got some development to him that we're not even you know we weren't even expecting and on this particular play they were doing that you know that thing with cd lamb trying to bring him around on reverse and it kind of looked like he was getting ready to throw the ball and lo and behold right there number 31 gets in between him and his receiver and makes it not happen boom play is dissolved Watch it from the other angle here. Curl again with another good play, this time in coverage. Top of your screen, top right-hand corner. Now everything happens so fast on this play, it's kind of bang, bang, but I'm gonna let you know, watch who makes the sack, quote unquote. Number 39, Jeremy Reeves, bow, there you go. First sack of his career. And by the way, yes, that was credited as a sack in the book. Something interesting to point out here or to note here, but this play was actually, they showed this on SportsCenter and they over and over again said that Lamb dropped this pass. They didn't give any credit to Moreland or to Jeremy Reeves that they swatted this pass out of his hand or that he went to go, he, you know, he kind of bobbled it and the ball was up in the air and they smacked it away. No, they said he dropped it. He's the one who dropped it is what they kept saying. I just hate it when you know these false these false perceptions are put out. 
Here's another play where Curl's able to step up and really assert his tackling skills. I, I can't say enough about how, how much I like this kid and how much I love the way that he can wrap up and there's no BS and the play is over. Again, another thing I like to see them doing with him, they move him up to the line. He kind of hides on the edge there and then creeps around the corner at the last second, tries to get the quarterback to, to, to throw him off his, you know, his set. And he doesn't have his eye on the ball. It's, it kind of throws the quarterback off at the last second. He doesn't have his, his eye on the receiver. He's got his eye on curl coming around the turn. Just the little things. Now this play right here will go down in the stat book for my boy, Tim Settle getting a sack you know, penguin dancing man. But honestly, this is close to a coverage sack as you're going to get anywhere in the book. Um, and Cam does his job coming across the middle right here. This play right here is a good example of some good open field tackling that I'm coming to expect from Cam Crow. Now this play right here has been getting a lot of national attention because of obviously what happens in it. But what a lot of people aren't noticing is that Cameron Curl was actually right there and probably would have picked that pass off had Montez Sweat not got his hands on it. Now obviously I mean and after Sweat batted it, if he hadn't have actually put his hands on it after he batted it, you know, I believe that Curl probably would have grabbed it and ran it in with a touchdown a really good play man i like seeing our defense come together on stuff like that i mean definitely was an exciting play to watch i mean we have to watch it again right here i, mean, I really like seeing a defense that can do this to teams and i love sweat i mean sweat is just an unbelievable player you know i really can't stress enough how much we need the safety position to be filled and taken care of and how long as a franchise we have you know gone without that being a thing you know um it really probably is since sean taylor and Leron landry were at the position uh, before he died in 2007 and then landry kind of went downhill after that it's pretty obvious that sean was probably having a a, a good react a good you know effect on him and you know how that works and, and landry was actually a lot better player before sean died too in you know aspects of his game and his game kind of deteriorated a little bit after that some could say it came after the Brandon Jacobs hit and then, you know, he always felt the need to get bigger and bigger. But anyway, the team has never fully recovered from that from a roster standpoint. And it's been obvious over the years to anyone that's paid attention. And while I haven't seen enough yet of Jeremy Reeves to know whether or not he may be an option for us going forward in the future at free safety and maybe the option we've been looking for, I will say that it's promising in the small amount of time I've seen him on the field and the small amount of actual footage I have to look at is promising. He's been spending a lot of time on special teams as well. I saw somebody in the comments say that we should really give it up to our practice squad for him and his ability to be able to wrap up. And, you know, they were saying Curl too, but Curl really hasn't spent any time on the practice squad. He's, you know, a seventh round pick in this draft. But these two guys could be, you know, a good starting point to build on with young guys. You know, as I said before, I'm not really certain what the future will hold with Landon Collins. I've always felt like, you know, he was better as a hybrid type playing, you know, up at the, at the middle linebacker, up playing that dime backer in, in dime formations or in nickel back or whatever. I've always felt like he played better kind of playing that monster man is what we used to call it in 4-4 with the extra linebacker. I, I'm not saying that at the professional level, they're going to pay him that kind of money to shift around and play linebacker. But, you know, it's just a thought. I'm trying to say that I really like the idea of having younger guys surrounded by guys that can make the plays happen. You know, I, I'm not looking for big names. I'm not looking for big contracts. I'm just looking for big play. 
That's the reason why I like what Ron Rivera and Jack Del Rio were doing with this defensive unit. It appears like they're trying to get things on the even, you know, keel so that we could try to start building something from the base up. You know, become a team that doesn't chase uh, free agents, you know, have our own talent that we bring in in-house through the draft or, you know, through the undrafted process or whatever the case may be. And then when we need a, a player here and there, we can kind of plug them in if they're perfect through free agency, but not necessarily depend on free agency to build the team with, which is something I think that we've fallen victim to over the years. And, you know, maybe the Landon Collins signing was that way. I know that I, for one, supported the Landon Collins signing, and I still do. I think that he is a unbelievable talent. I do believe that he's overrated a little bit, you know, as comparative to what I thought he was originally. But at the same time, I also feel like a majority of these players are overpaid. So you can't really say that he's overrated based on what he's paid. You have to rate him on what he brings to the field. And I think he's always had a little bit of problems covering the faster tight ends in the league, which I feel like every player has a problem covering. Um, you know, you're Jordan Reed's when he's healthy type players, you know. Those guys are a mismatch for every team in the NFL. It's not just ours. And I feel like sometimes our fans get caught up in that thought pattern like, oh, it's just us that can't cover tight ends. No, it's everybody, folks. But it's highly refreshing to see a player like Cameron Curl come in as a seventh round draft pick and take advantage of the situation, meaning having the opportunity presented to him after a misfortune of another player getting hurt and him just seizing the moment and becoming the starter. And the coaching staff is getting behind this kid. And it's obvious when you watch the film that the other players are able to feed off of him and they're able to play well as a unit. You know, I've always heard people go back and forth and back and forth about whether it's the front seven that makes the back four or the back four that makes the front seven. Truth is, you need good play from both sides. I would say the front seven probably is the basis for everything. But you need a good back end as well, at least to be able to hold up what the front seven can't produce off of. And I'm still learning a lot about what this defense can do and, you know, what the, the, the secondary is really going to produce with. I don't really think they have that great of a secondary yet. I like Kendall Fuller. I'm not the biggest Darby fan. And I like Jimmy Moreland, but I feel like Jimmy Moreland's got a little ways to come yet. He isn't the greatest guy in coverage yet we all know that he could jump routes and take off with the ball even though he hasn't been that much of a threat with that at this point you know but as the offense continues to gel and get to a point where they can actually you know move down the field and get things done the way that they need to the defense is really going to get better because then you're going to be able you know the defense can then depend on things as far as not have to be stuck on the field the entire friggin game that's why turnovers are so important you know, to a defense to get them off the field, get the offense back on the field. And then if you have a good offense, that's good at time consuming and, and good with, 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 you know, just really doing stuff with the rushing game and making things happen and putting points on the board is the most important thing. Then the defense has a lot of options. The defense can do a lot more things. They can get a lot more aggressive with the play calls and, you know, uh, the quarterback pressure. It really opens up the options with the team all around the board. I know I, for one, have a big eye on what's going on with the safeties at this point. I noticed that Troy Apke did not spend a whole lot of time on the field this week because Reeves spent a lot of time in that position. Now, what I'm hoping for is when DeShazer ever comes back that we could kind of shift Apke more to special teams and spot duty, and that's it. As a special teams player, hey, I can handle it. As a starter, I'm just cringing all the time, waiting for him to mess up or not cover the back end the correct way. And I will tell you that in that game with Dallas, he did have one good play there at the end where he made a play and, 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 and killed the drive. So I give credit where credit is due. But I also think that's because as a unit, they were really doing their, their job and putting in work. At any rate, I'm really looking forward to what you know this unit brings as a whole as far as the defensive side of the ball. Let me know any opinions you might have down in the comments. Like always, y'all take it easy. Peace.